Today I'd like to show you how to work with groups within Cookin. Cookin has lots of ingredients already pre-installed with many groups and divisions. This is for making your shopping list easier and better organized. Um, but let's say you want to edit that and make it a little more custom to you. Let's say instead of having multiple categories of dairy products, most of your dairy needs are all in the same section to your grocery store that you use and you don't have the need for as many category as many of the groups that are in cooking so I'm gonna show you how to edit that and to make it a little more custom to your needs the first thing I do is let's create a, uh, a shopping list I'm just gonna take the seven layer dip that comes in the dvo.com cookbook and I'm gonna go ahead and make a list from this recipe So what we can see here is you can see the groups here in bold. You've got dairy, sour cream, dairy, cheese. Now at my grocery store, these items are fairly close to each other, and I think it'd just be simpler to have one group. This may be also the case when you look at meats. You may not you have a need for uh, you know, meats, comma, poultry, meats, comma, beef. They may be in the same area, and it just may make it simpler and a little cleaner to uh, just have one category. You also might have a need to change an ingredients category um, because it's not in one that you would like or it's in a different place in your grocery store. So let's start with uh, combining these categories. If we go up to the view menu there's a option called groups and in here you can see all the groups that come set in cooking here and as you can see there's uh, quite a few for dairy. I'm going to focus on those so we can see it here but if let's say that uh, you know, milk, yogurt, butter, sour cream, cottage cheese, and cheese are all things that are relatively in the same area, and I don't have a need to put these in different groups. In fact, I'd like it better if it was a little simpler and it just said dairy. So right in here, you can click on one of these, and right here in a group name, you can just simply edit that. I'm just going to take away um, the milk part and then click Save. Now what you don't want to do is delete it. If you delete any of these groups, there are ingredients that are associated with these groups, they will then be ingredients that have no group. So in this case, what I don't want to do here is I don't want to just delete dairy, um, comma, yogurt. I want to combine it into this one. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to, the same way I did the first one, is get rid of the name so that it just says dairy. And then when I click save, it's going to open a dialog box. Now it says, that food group already exists. Would you like to replace the food group with the other one in the list? I do want to replace it with the other one in the list. So I essentially what that's saying is it's going to combine the ingredients into one group called dairy. So I'm going to click yes, and then it's combined that. If I want the same thing with uh, butter and margarine, we just do the same thing and repeat. It's going to ask again, we click yes. Let's take the sour cream, since that's the one that's going to show up in our shopping list we made. Dairy, save, yes. And uh, let's do cheese here, because that was the other. Now it's pretty simple now that you know what it's doing. And you can do the same thing. You can see the same thing here with meats. You've got beef, ham, poultry. You may want those all as one category called meats. And there may be several others like that. So if we come in here, we close down this. We come back to our um, shopping list. I'm just going to hit settings and OK, so it'll kind of recalculate. We can see now that we have one group for two of the ingredients in this recipe. Sour cream and sharp cheddar cheese are both located now under the dairy group. This just helps make the list a little cleaner and a little uh, more organized. And if we went through and did that with our groups, you can make these groups custom to how your uh, local grocery store is set up and to your own needs. And that's just one of the ways that Cookin um, is customizable to make it a, a, a better product tailored for you and your needs. Here's another tip for you with in working with the groups within Cookin. We're back to our same shopping list where we just uh, combined the dairy products into one group. But what if you want to actually change the group of an item on the list? Let's take, for example, this uh, 
this lime juice. Under here it says it, um, it's in the beverages category. Now the lime juice I'm thinking of is the lime juice from Concentrate that would probably be for this bean dip. And at my grocery store, it's not actually in the beverage section of the grocery store. This is actually a product that would be near the found near the limes, um, closer to the fresh produce. So I'd actually like to change it for that uh, in that area, so that when I'm doing my fresh produce shopping, I don't forget and pass over the lime juice and have to come back for it. So to edit that, it's pretty simple. Once you have your list here, you can go ahead and actually just click on the uh, brand of the ingredient you'd like to edit the group it's in. So if we double click the the brand here, it's going to open the brand information up. Now here in the brand information is a lot of things that can be adjusted and changed, but right here is the food group. There's a little drop down menu. It's very simple. We're just going to change this and where it is in my local grocery store is near the fresh produce. It's actually near the limes itself. So I'm going to go ahead and change that and don't forget to click Save. So now once that's saved we can go back to our shopping list. And I'm just going to click the settings and OK so the shopping list is recalculated. And it should regroup things. So now as you can see the lime juice is actually in the same group as the fresh produce. Now I have all the fresh produce items in one group which is starting to make the the list a little more chunked and a little simpler and this is a good example of how you can further customize these groups to help you make your shopping list a little simpler and be a little quicker in the grocery store and that's the goal here is we're trying to make cooking so that you can customize it here so that it saves you time and money in the grocery store. And that concludes our tip this month on how to customize the groups. I hope you can take the couple examples I was able to show you here and use that to further explore how to make groups custom tailored to your own needs and to what your local grocery shopping is like. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Please let me know in the comments below. Please also include any um, ideas of tips you'd like to see explained in detail in the future and we'll make sure to get to those. We do one every month for our newsletter but we're looking at doing more. So please let us know in the comments below.